job singing. So glad to see you back on Sunday night. And uh, even if you knew who was preaching, I'm glad you came back. But we can tell when the cat's away, the mice will go somewhere else. That's okay. And uh, we're delighted to have you back here for the Sunday evening service. Spoke with Preacher White, and things went well this afternoon at their 2 o'clock service for Brother Chesney. But continue to pray for he and Miss Jennifer and the family. They're uh, deciding when to come back, whether it's tonight or tomorrow. I tried to tell him to take as much time as he needs for the family, and I'm sure you feel the same way. But a great service this morning. Brother Kirby Campbell, I'm telling you what, uh, those four points should be written somewhere in everyone's Bible because if you didn't need it today, you will someday. Or you'll know somebody who needs to hear those points that he gave, and you'll wind up looking like a great theologian when you go, you know what, in my Bible I was reading one time, which is true, and uh, the Lord just showed this, and you could give that to be a help to someone. So let's pray that we can do that to the best of our ability. Let's open the, word, uh, open the service with a word of prayer. We'll enjoy the choir and have a good rest of the service. Our Father in heaven, as we ask for your hand of blessing upon this service. We're grateful for the cross. And as that song was sung this morning, I'm also thankful for the blood that was shed on that cross. And Lord, without Jesus, what hope would we have? There's no court hearing decision. There's no nomination. There's no election that could ever deter us from the fact that it's through the blood that you see us as saved Christians. And God, I pray that we would take that same blood and try to find someone else who needs to hear that good news. We pray now intently for our preacher and their family and during this obstacle in which they're in. I pray that you give them wisdom and grace. And Lord, just watch upon them, Lord, and give them wisdom as to how and when to be back with us. I pray, Lord, that you would help them as like never before. Strengthen them. We sure are grateful for our church and the people of this church. Now this morning there were dozens and dozens who were preached to from the word of God outside of this service who heard the gospel. There were bus workers who ran buses to pick folks up at both homes, apartments, and nursing homes. Lord, may we continue to get the gospel out and bring people in. We love you. Meet with us now these next few moments is our prayer, and we ask these things in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Just handed this before the uh, service started. Pray for Roy Hall. He has surgery on Tuesday. This is Kay Kaiser's dad, and it's a big surgery. It'll be at Medical Park. He's got about 30% of a working heart, 20% of his kidneys, and so they've met with the family and told them. So let's let, make sure we're praying for that on Tuesday. And uh, if you have a, if you're part of the pastor's prayer team and prayer line, we'll put it on that for you as well. Then Monday night visitation is at 7 o'clock p.m. 
Uh, we will not have one by one team soul winning this Wednesday. We're going to do a final play practice and get things ready for our uh, dinner to show on Saturday. And that starts at 5 p.m. If you purchase tickets and you're coming, please be here by 5. That's when the, the murder mystery starts, okay? So we're not eating right off the start. So if you get there late, you may not be able to guess who done it. And so please be there. We'll start promptly at 5. And uh, Miss Connie said we ran out of tickets. I didn't, I didn't have much faith in the folks at Freedom Baptist Church, but y'all are bringing friends and family. So uh, if you did order tickets or still need to, tonight is the deadline. That way we can make sure there's enough food. No ticket. No show, all right? So that's how it works. Please help us with that and pre-purchase a ticket. You can see Miss Connie afterwards, $10 per person. Then the ladies shopping trip is March 11 through 12. And you can see Annette Fischel if you're interested. The sign-up sheet is in the vestibule. Be in prayer for our youth revival, March 17 and 18. Let me just say this, we're doing something unique that we've really not done for our youth revivals in the past. Uh, we're doing what we call snack. S-N-A-C, we call it Sunday night after church. We have about four of those activities a year. And this particular Sunday night, we're going to take the teens to the preacher's house. We'll be with Miss Jennifer. We'll sing a little bit, testify, and just uh, have a time of prayer and preparation for our youth revival. And then on Wednesday the 16th, you'll enjoy it. We'll kind of have a combo choir together. Preacher White's going to kick off the youth rally. We've asked him to speak. And, of course, um, what we're going to do is the, the, the Freedom Kids Choir will be here. They'll sing. The Teen Choir, they'll be here singing. We'll even sing a song together. So you'll enjoy that. And then on Thursday and Friday, Brother Jody Jenkins, he's a pastor of Buffalo Ridge Baptist Church in the Knoxville area. So be in prayer for that. Ladies' Conference is Saturday, April 9th. Timeless Treasures is the theme. Special speaker will be Miss Jo Beth Hooker. And if you've been to our couples retreats, you've met her already. And uh, so we look forward to having her. Registration forms are in the vestibule. You may sign up now by giving a form and money to Leslie Tuttle. If you have any questions, see Zena Wilmoth. Then afterwards, we'll have our pastor's prayer team meeting. And Brother Jeff, I think, uh, Brother Jeff, you'll help run that for us. And thank you very much for that in preacher's absence. Then these, uh, these uh, slips are in the vestibule area, the Freedom Kids Activity Permission Slip. They're going to the Greensboro Science Center on April 2nd from 11 a.m. to about 3.30. So if you've got a child in the Freedom Kids, they need to have one of these forms filled out and turned in. And uh, if you could do that, if you have any questions, you can see Miss Brittany uh, Tucker or you could see Daniel Ritchie and they'll help with that. All right, well, I guess it's time to have our offering. And uh, boy, that song this morning, Miss Carla, that you two sang was... I saw Miss Annette. It was all over her. I saw the Robinsons. I saw the Snyders. That was good. God met with us. And uh, Brother Greg, I'm going to ask you to pray tonight for the uh, Sunday evening offering. And let's ask the Lord to do it again. All right? all right. Dear Lord, we just thank you for this day. We just thank you for this time that we can come together as a church family. And we're here to, to, to worship you and just share each other's burdens and to glorify you. And, and we just want to magnify you as we learn today and not not on the fear so we just ask you be with the gift and the giver tonight in jesus name amen rocked by waves and howling winds and the storm that threatened them the disciples sailed above
staying to our feet. Choir's going to come down and join you. Shake hands. Greet someone around you. Tell them you're glad in church tonight. I know many of us are trying to find a seat, but everyone keeps going by the pew where Brother Ford Yarborough is. Good to have you in church with us tonight. Brother Ford, good to see you. Thank you for being with us, and thank you for everyone being with us, all right? I'm just delighted you'd be back for Sunday evening service, and I thank for those uh, who prayed for uh, my mother-in-law and I. We traveled last week, went to California, and I was nice enough to bring her back with me. So uh, there she is. I knew I was in trouble. I was going to be in for a long trip. We had, the, uh, we had that 5.15 or 5.30 a.m. flight, Brother Hopkins, from Greensboro. So uh, we headed out a little bit before 4 and got there, and we're going through security. And, you know, you stand like a deer and put your hands like this, and whoo, whoo, and goes around you. And out of all the people in security, they thought it was nice to pat down Miss Nancy. Ma'am, can you come over here, please? Could you just? I went, oh, Lord, here we go. And uh, so they're, 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 they're uh, she's, and she's just Nancy, <laughs> and they got those little white pieces of cloth, and they sprayed them, and they're doing her purse, and they do her hands, and I can't make this up. Miss Nancy goes, huh, what are you looking for, drugs? <laughs> In my head, I was like saying, go ahead, just say the word bomb. Go ahead, I dare you, Grandma. Just, just say the word bomb, and let's, let's. I'll enjoy this one-way trip, and, uh, but she did good. We connected in Atlanta, and you know how it works, Brother Robert. When you have like a three-hour layover, you land in C2, and you connect in C4. It's right next to it. But when you have a 35-minute layover, you land in T11, and you connect in A59, all right? And, but she was scooting and going, and I was trying, and she was like, okay, okay. I said, oh, I got to go. No, no bathroom break. We got to get to the gate. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And uh, we got there, and she sat next to a lady on the plane and spoke to her and everyone else on the plane. And, uh, hi, I'm Nancy. Good, really? Wow. I'm just sitting there. I'm going, I'm going to fall asleep right now. And, uh, but she did get to go, and we, uh, she uh, saw her brothers. She hadn't seen in years, actually, since we moved here, obviously, and uh, got to see Dennis her uh, late husband's grave site, and uh, so it was a, just a good trip. And uh, every plane we got on, we had fun. I'd be scooting back there, I'd see the flight attendant, and said, ma'am, do you have any extra room under the plane? She's like, oh, yes, sir, do you have an extra bag? I said, yes, my mother-in-law. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. uh, oh, come on, you enjoyed it, Miss Nancy. You love the attention. Everyone always says, you sure do make fun of your mother-in-law. I said, that's just a way of how I express my love for her, and I really love her. So, and uh, probably get jealous, Grandma. We call her Grandma, or actually the kids call her G-Money. I don't know why, but they do. And uh, she, uh, Brother White says he doesn't have any in-law jokes. He was reminding the church he was doing the funeral service there yesterday, and I was sitting there going, I got plenty if you need some, you know, and... uh, but it's good to be here. I'm excited. If you're, if you're back visiting tonight, thank you for coming back. But please do come again. 
and meet our preacher. And I mean that. I was grateful for the day. In our Sunday school class, we had 21 in attendance. That don't mean like a much, but it seemed like just a few years ago, there was uh, four of us meeting in this room. Remember, Jimmy, when you had all the adult classes? Jimmy's not here. But you remember when all the adult classes were over there, and we had our first Sunday, there was like four or five of us there. And, and uh, so we're praying for more folks to come. And if you don't have a Sunday school, we'd love to have you in the New Life Sunday School class. There are several great classes. They all, a lot of them meet downstairs. Um, and then Jerry has a class here. There's a handful of classes down the hallway. Uh, don't just come at 11 or 6. Enjoy the fact of studying the Bible. Uh, 2 Timothy teaches us, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman needeth not to be ashamed. And then as I get ready to, we'll have a song. And then I'll preach. Don't worry, I know what I'm preaching on. It ain't that much, so uh, we'll just focus here. Let me just say this. As just now as the uh, youth pastor, we do have skit practice. So this is in, in preparation for Saturday. If you've been signed up or you're in a skit, if you can meet us in the fellowship hall, just got to go through a few things there in preparation. And again, church, thank you for signing up. I gave Connie, I think, 60 or 70 tickets, and she goes, I've got 100 people signed up. I went, uh-oh. And uh, so now the teens are freaking out, but uh, we'll, we'll do our best. Hope you enjoy the entertainment part of that. But then let me also just speak for just a minute about the, as, as the assistant pastor, as, as an assistant to our pastor. Uh, pray for your pastor. Pray for his family. And if I can try to help you to realize that your pastor does more than just stand behind this pulpit for 30 minutes on Sunday morning, 35 minutes, 40 minutes on Sunday night, and 35 minutes on Wednesday. And the few things that you know he does, I'm not dismissing that, he probably does, but there's a score of things that you don't, and I'm not saying, how ah, you don't know, I'm just saying he does a lot. And we're grateful for it. And we're grateful for the fact that we have had a church secretary and a church treasurer for these many years, but now we have a pastor's secretary. Um, try to utilize that pastor's secretary as much as possible. If there's a question, now, now he'll want you to text him and that's fine. But if there's some things that can wait until the, try to avoid uh, 1054 a.m. to tell him this urgent news. Does that make sense? To clear his mind, to he's coming up to preach, and then he sits up here, and then he's taking roll. I know, he shouldn't do that. He's taking roll. He's wondering where so-and-so, where so-and-so, where so-and-so. And then these other people come up, to, and now he's got to preach a message. He'll continue to be a great pastor that he is, but let's try to help him as best as possible. Just ask yourself, is this urgent that he needs to know? Send him a text message. And when the service is over, he'll go through his phone and go through the other 40 text messages he has, and he'll go through yours as well. Uh, but let's not try to bog the pastor down as much uh, before service if we can help it, all right? Now, I was given a prayer request about a surgery and stuff. That's great. We'll need to know that. But if you're wondering uh, two weeks from now if there's going to be a work day and if you should bring a spade shovel or a flat shovel, that one can wait. All right, and uh, so help us with that. And I'm just, that's just a PSA from the associate pastor, just trying to assist the pastor. And uh, no, 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 no fussing, no nothing, but, but just try to do that if you could, all right? Take your Bibles and we'll go to 2 Timothy, and we'll be in a few chapters there in 2 Timothy. So just open to the book of first, uh, 2 Timothy. Uh, we'll have a word of prayer, and then we'll enjoy this song, and then jump right into the message. Father in heaven, I pray, God, you would use the truth from the message tonight to help us as Christians, to help us to be more than conquerors, as our theme states for this church. And God, I think Preacher White said it the first or second Sunday, as he says, if you're going to be a conqueror, there's going to have to be some conquering. There's going to be some battles that we're going to face. And I pray as we do that, we'll fight the good fight of faith, that we'll be able to become an overcomer and a conqueror. Bless the music and the message to follow as he sings in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. In my darkness, Jesus found me. Touched my Mom. 
O-N. Oh, you don't have to bow at my feet. I'm glad, yeah, I appreciate that respect, but please. Uh, there's an earring up here. If anybody missing an earring, we'll sell it for $5, and uh, you can get it afterwards. And 2 Timothy chapter number 2. 2 Timothy chapter number 2 has a tremendous amount of wealth in it. And we'll just jump through several things and then we'll come back to our text verse. But look with me in 2 Timothy chapter 2. First of all, in verse number 1, all of these examples, all of these uh, similes that Paul is giving to his mentee Timothy. Paul's the mentor, Timothy's the mentee, and uh, he's giving them some, the Christian life is like, and you can always understand this, and in verse number one, he says, thou therefore my, what's the next word? Son. Thou therefore my, what's the next word? Son. He says, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. So he says, the Christian life, I want to talk to you about this as a strong son. Then jump down to uh, verse number five. He says, and if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. And that has to do with those who are crowned, who strive, who compete, uh, an athlete. So he says, not only should you be a strong son, you should be an astute athlete. Uh, you are not crowned unless you strive lawfully, unless you play by the rules, if he could say it that way. And he says, let me tell you what else the Christian life needs and is like. He says, it's like a faithful farmer. Look at verse number six. And the husbandman that laboreth must first be partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say, and Lord, give thee understanding in all these things. But Paul doesn't stop there. He says, I don't want to just stand up here and tell you that the Christian life is smiles and roses all the time. He says, look at verse number nine. He sees, I, I see here what I wrote, a persecuted prisoner. Verse 9, when I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake that they may also obtain the salvation, which is in Christ Jesus and eternal glory. And then I see a suffering saint in verse 11. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. And then the verse I mentioned earlier, uh, when I talked about Sunday school, verse 15, I call this the studious student, which I know is redundant, but it says, study to show thyself to prove unto God. I see verse 20, what I call a valuable vessel. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but of wood and of earth and some to honor and some to dishonor. And then I see the sweet servant in verse 24. But I skipped over verse number three, where it states, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier. As a good soldier of Jesus Christ. In verse four he says, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. You do realize everything we do as a good soldier of Jesus Christ should be asking ourselves, does this please my commander in chief? Any of you who served in military understand that principle. And we hoorah, we understand it there, but God's not expecting any less from us as Christians that when we see our commander in chief, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ teach, or, or we hear a principal preach, we ought to take it as an order. The commander's request is the soldier's order. And I think of this, if we want to be more than conquerors, we must understand the fact that there's a fight out there waiting to happen. And some of us may need a wake up call to start fighting. Pat Tillman, the name may sound familiar to a handful of folks here, but Pat Tillman played football at Arizona State University. Upon graduation, he was drafted by the Arizona Cardinals in the NFL. After playing two seasons, he was up for a contract renewal. In 2001, he was ready to sign, over many years, a multi-million dollar contract. And then September 11th happened. 
September 11th shook our nation to its core. It shook our nation so much that we stopped in the middle of the afternoon and our president said, let's have a time of prayer. And then three weeks later, we were pretty much back to same old, same old. And then the one year anniversary came and boy, we will never forget until one month later. But there were a few individuals whom that date really did make an impact. And one of them was Pat Tillman, who chose not to sign the dotted line and walked away from a multi-million dollar football contract and enlisted in the U.S. Army. Being the middle linebacker athlete he was, he got through boot camp fairly easy for him. He then enlisted to become part of the elite group of the elite, right? And as he worked his way up, he was then in Afghanistan, and the sad part is his life was taken. It was taken by friendly fire, though he did serve several missions out there against our enemies. But that one moment of September 11th shook Pat Tillman to the core enough to say, it's time to enlist. It's time to fight. And I want to say to our church members here tonight, I want to say to our Christians as soldiers, it's time to fight. I went to California and I landed back here and I saw the news results of a court hearing in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I thought, wait a minute, is this California or North Carolina? And we know it's not just North Carolina. I'm already thinking, oh, if this upholds and stays right, boy, if we have youth activities, when girls on a youth activity say, Brother Clint, we need to use a restroom, that's going to be the whole group going to the restroom now. There's going to be a lot of change. It affects the way we live. Safety first. We got to do things the right way and make sure, you know, I mean, I don't want to say, hey, Nathan Bryan, go in there and check and make sure everything's okay first before we send the girls in there. But hey, if we got to do what we got to do, we'll figure out some way to do it. I, I just said Nathan because I can picture him going, oh, I don't want to do it. Hey, and I, that's okay. <laughs> How many of you attend Brother Jimmy Smith's Sunday school class downstairs? All right, you may lower your hands. Have, you ever, have any of you ever asked him what that four-word outline on that dry erase board is all about? It's still down there, Brother Jimmy. I don't know if you know the words on there, but it has these words. Follower, faithful, familiar, and finisher. Those four words are up there. I put those four words up there. I put those four words up there in June. If there's any teenagers here, you know when I put those words up there. We had junior camp, and we have four services during the week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. And I taught on this topic to them about being a good soldier, and I told them that, yes, we should be followers, and we should be faithful, and we should be uh, uh, finishers, and we should be familiar, and we spoke on those things, but I skipped this one. At that age, I hope they didn't have to make these types of decisions, and sixth grade and below, but I find it very fitting here for us. A, these would be attributes of a good soldier, that he's a follower, he's faithful, he's familiar, he's a finisher. But tonight I speak on this one topic, not all five, about a good soldier as a fighter. A good soldier as a fighter. And I think that I pray that no event has to ever take place in our lives to shake us to the core to get us to have to fight. Now, let me say this, though. Um, I'm not looking for a fight, but I ain't going to run from one if it happens. Right? I'm a lover, not a fighter. Right? That's how we are from California. I've talked myself out of a lot of precarious situations. I'll just say it that way. Not only has this mouth got me in trouble, this mouth has gotten me out of a lot of trouble as well. And so I'm not going to stand up here and try to associate with our Stokes County, Surrey County, Forsyth County men of men and wild meat men's fellowship and say, yeah, I remember that one time. But I'm 43 years old and I've only been in one fist fight. I almost feel bad when I hear Preacher White talk about, oh, we all went to the, what was that grocery mark they go for all the fights? I forgot, but you know, up behind uh, North, was it? 
Winn-Dixie, yeah, go to Winn-Dixie, go to, I was like, man, I wish I could have gone to Winn-Dixie. I would have loved to watch, right? And uh, so, so go to Winn-Dixie. We didn't have a Winn-Dixie. They just all fought in the boys' bathroom, you know, uh, at our school. And uh, again, I, 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 I've never really looked for a fight, but I, I'll never forget. Melvin Avenue Elementary School, second grade. There in California, one of my classmates' name, and again, it's California, different ethnicities and foreign folks and stuff, and I had a guy that sat next to me named Shaheen. He wasn't from North Carolina, I'll tell you that right now. And Shaheen was kind of just bugging me all day. And Shaheen was just kind of poking me most of the day. We'd go to lunch, and he was making fun, and I'd retaliate. We'd poke fun, poke fun, poke fun, and normally that's the end of it. We just kind of make fun of each other. That's how we do it in California. Yeah, well, your mama so. Yeah, well, your mama just, well, it's about five or six your mama jokes. It's done. But he kept going. He kept going. Now, I'm not here to tell you that, boy, we lined up. and I got in the perfect stance. And, boy, you know what they teach you in boxing. When you hit that fist right on the face, you, you turn the glove to help open up the wound more and all that stuff. And, yeah, I don't know that. I just know I watched a lot of Bruce Lee movies when I was young. So I was like, oh, I just, you know, make a lot of noise and see if that scares them off first. And Shaheen wasn't moving, man. And finally, I remember vividly, while we were playing Foursquare, Shaheen made one more comment, and then he threw the ball at me. Well, then everyone, every the other second graders in line, what do they do when that happened? Ooh, they're, they're, they're egging us on, Brother Chris, right? And again, I'm just saying this, it was the one in a million shot. I don't know if it's just because I lived in California and you think of movies, but Shaheen started walking to me and I walked this way and I gave the ball to Brian Barry. And I just went, is he behind me? And he goes, Yeah. I don't even know if my eyes were open. I don't know if my thumb was inside my knuckles or outside my knuckles, but I just know. I turned around and said, well, here we go. And I just went, ha, like that. And I, you, I don't know if, there's a, if there is a perfect hit, but somehow I hit him right on the chin. And I could vividly see his jaw go like that. And all he did was go, ah, and he ran to the teacher and I got in trouble. Shaheen, you know, second grade, 1980, 79, seven, what year was that, 79, I guess, 78? Shaheen, you know, I may have started the war in the Middle East because of that second grade fight with Shaheen. I don't know. It may be my fault. I apologize. But I got in trouble, and, I, and, and boy, I, I don't know, but something happened, man. When I did that, I started to feel... Second grade, I probably weighed about 53 pounds soaking wet, maybe. I may have been about three foot seven inches. I don't know, but I felt about six foot two. Now, you younger kids don't know this, but I, I felt like Larry Holmes. He was the big heavyweight boxer of my time growing up. And I felt like the Easton assassin. I felt like Larry Holmes. But when it was all done, I was kind of like, now what? It wasn't all that it was cracked up to be. All the fights we used to watch the other kids get over because they're fighting because he took his peachy folder and this and that. And all of a sudden they're fighting. You're looking, yeah, yeah. But, but I hit him, I was done. I was kind of like, all right, who, who's, who's, whose turn is it? I want to play Foursquare again. I, I'm not a fighter, but I'm not, I'm not running from a fight. And I want us all to know that there must be a readiness for the fight when it comes. And I think too many of us are expecting and prepared for the physical fight, but we're getting whooped around on the spiritual fight. Thou therefore as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. Can I remind you, Christian, today that we are not to be entangled in the things here. We are supposed to be involved in the things here, but our treasures are up in heaven. Our goal is Christ, and that is what the ultimate goal shall be. And if we're going to be the right type of fighter, I'll just say this quickly. We must be determined to fight. Moms and dads, are you determined to fight for your home? Are you determined to fight 
for your kids. And I mean determined, I mean, I mean as much as some of you will defend your favorite sporting team. Or as much as some of us will defend our favorite, you name it. Oh, I like shopping at this mall. That mall? I can't believe you go to that mall. Good night. Don't you know that they know? You should go to this mall. And we will stand up for some of the most hideous things. Yet when it comes to spiritual things, that's not my fight. We must be determined. A devoting of full strength and concentration and attention to. We must be determined to fight for our fellow man, to pray for one another at Freedom Baptist Church. If you have children that attend the Wednesday Freedom uh, Youth Club, let me ask you this, mom and dad, how much do you pray for those teachers of your children? Well, let me back up. Do you know who teaches your children on Wednesday? You see, we got to get all the information right if we're going to be determined to get in this fight. Because you may not know the teacher's name that teaches your child and prays for them during the week and goes over a memory verse with them and teaches them those words of God. Mom and dad, do you know who your kids, your teenager Sunday school teachers are? Yeah, it's that one guy. That one guy, uh, he wears a tie. <laughs> that one guy prepared a lesson all week. That one lady got, got with the Lord and said, I think this would help our young men and young ladies in our youth group. This is an enlisted army of fighters and we must fight together the same fight. We must be determined. The good soldier does not retreat in the face of the enemy. He does not run from the fight. Instead, he stands his ground and fights his battle until the battle is over. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 19 says this, Holding faith and a good conscience, which some, having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck. It's time that we become determined that we're going to fight for the faith. We're going to fight for the family. We're going to fight for our spouse. We're going to fight for our children. We're going to fight and be determined to do it. Because it won't be long before those kids are gone. And you'll have no one to fight for then. We must be determined a holding faith and a good conscience. A holding faith and a good conscience. With a clear conscience, determine. Moms and dads, let's pray for our children on a daily basis. Let's determine to be in this fight, not with them, for them. Husbands, let's pray for our wives so we can fight for them, not with them. Wives, let's pray for our husbands so we can fight for them, not with them. Church members, let's pray for one another so we can fight for them and not with them. And let's pray for our pastor and his family so we can fight for them. Why are they doing that and not with them? Let's determine tonight that, hey, I'm not going to run from the fight, but I'm telling you, Satan's bringing the fight through our televisions. Satan's bringing the fight through our iPods and our radios and our headsets and everything else. He's bringing it. I know you won't run from one, but you better be aware that there's one probably at your front door tonight. We must be determined, determined, determined. The little engine that could, right? The little engine that could. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. That's what we need to do as parenting. I think I can do this. I think, I, yes, you can do it. Just keep doing it. Well, I don't know. I can do all things through Christ who strengthen me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthen me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthen me. And be faith dedicated, dedicated, dedicated. Dedicated to be here Sunday morning at 11. Dedicated to be here Sunday night at 6. Dedicated to be here Wednesday night. And to be here, to be here, to be here. I told this to our Sunday school class this morning. Much counseling is mainly done on unfaithful church members. Let me say that again. Much counseling is normally done on unfaithful church members. They just squeeze in here one Sunday every three weeks. And I'm here to tell you that those who show up to every service don't necessarily never need counseling, but here's the great thing that God does. 
Your pastor goes to his closet and prays and seeks his will. And then he spends time with the Lord in the Bible. And then he reads other books and God gives him something. And then he gets up here to preach the word of God. And as he preaches, the Holy Spirit that's inside of you is ministered by the word of God and the music of God. And all of a sudden, that difficulty you were going through, this message just came at just the right time to help you. But here's the crazy thing. It didn't just help Jordan. In a totally unrelated obstacle, it helped Chris and Annette Fischel too. And in an un you can't explain it, it helped Jimmy and Connie too. And in a crazy way, that saved that, that one message, oh yeah, yeah, that, that Holy Ghost sure has a weird way of doing things, doesn't he? But it only helps for those who are in the room. Preacher White doesn't counsel those who are here Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night much because they get a lot of counseling every time he says, take your Bibles and turn to. And in the limited amount of counseling I've done, <laughs> this is crazy. I've sat down and people, we talk and ask questions and I am literally re-preaching to them something I may have preached a few weeks ago. And in my mind, I just say, Boy, I wish I would have been here to hear it the first time. Now, as leadership and authority, we would be glad to meet with anybody. But instead of coming on a Tuesday night for a 45 to an hour long meeting, why don't we just come Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night? Why don't we determine I ain't missing a service in the rest of 2016? Why don't we determine that I'm going to do my part to get ready for the battle? I'm going to do my part to enlist as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. I'm determined, I'm determined, I'm determined. I'm going to keep on going. Number two, not only is he determined, he's driven. A good soldier is driven. What drives that soldier to be the best he can be? We see here in verse 4, no man that warreth entangle himself with the affairs of this world, that he may please him. It's a small thing, but what drives a soldier to do what he does? Because my officer told me to. That's all they need. Boy, I need you to get down there and climb up that wall and get over that wall. Do you understand me? Uh, real quick. Why is the wall 16 feet tall? No, as soon as he hears the order, he's driven to say, I don't want to let him down. I want to please him. I want to please him. I want to please him. I mean, all right, you want me to jump that wall? All right, I'll jump in it, right? He says, jump in the air. You shouldn't say how high. You should be in the air going, how much higher? And uh, boy, we ought to be driven to please and please. And I say this, we should be driven to please God. Amen. To please God. The good soldier is driven. The good soldier realizes the battle does not run according to his time frame. He knows that another is in charge of the duration of the battle, but the good soldier is driven to finish. Are you? Are we? What would it take to make you quit today? Many Christians are about one disaster or one service away from quitting on the Lord. I challenge you to be driven. To not be in a service Oh, if I don't show up, Brother Daryl's probably going to ask me where I was. It's above Brother Daryl. Well, if I don't go to choir practice, then I'm going to, oh, I hope I don't make eye contact with Brother Roy, because if I do and I wasn't at practice, he's going to say, I hope you can say, I wonder if the Lord's disappointed with the fact I wasn't where I was supposed to be. Pleasing the Lord. Pleasing the Lord. We must be driven to please the Lord, driven to please the Lord. Let me finish quickly by saying this. He's, de he's dedicated. A good soldier is not just um, determined. A good soldier is not just driven. A good soldier is dedicated. Devoted to a cause or purpose. Devoted to a cause or purpose. Devoted. You want to be more than a conqueror? You must be devoted to a cause or purpose. The good soldier dedicates himself to keep his oath. He's dedicated to live for the Lord regardless of the personal cost. The good soldier says, I will keep my oath. Having been led, as we believe, 
by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we do now in the presence of God and this assembly, sounds like an oath, most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant oath with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit. It doesn't say by the aid of Dr. Phil. It doesn't say by the aid of Oprah. It says by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, its ordinances, uh, the Lord's table, baptism, uh, discipline, and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry. We're real good at that. We're real good at the support of the ministry. The expenses of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations, oath. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotions, to religiously educate our children, to religiously educate our children. Let me say that again, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and their acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world. No man having entangled himself in this world is a good soldier. Yeah. Sounds like an oath. To walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our deportment. To avoid all tattling, backbiting, and excessive anger. To abstain from the sale of and use of destructive drugs and intoxicating drinks as a beverage. To shun pornography. To be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember one another in prayer, to aid one another in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy and feeling and Christian courtesy and speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of others, of mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. We Take this oath. We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will, as soon as possible, unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. Can I tell each and can I remind each and every one of us when we joined Freedom Baptist Church, we didn't join a club. We didn't join a place that Maybe in the future, if I were to have some sort of event for my family, we can have access to some nice facilities. I mean, we do have those, but that's why we should be joining the church. And everything else is bonus. It's like, it's like what, I get that? No, what, you gotta be kidding me. I mean, I thought I was just going to unite with a bunch of brothers and sisters of Christ and we were going to charge hell with a squirt gun and we're going to protect our homes and we're going to pray for one another and we're going to do all we can to get the gospel out in this area. And I get to use a gymnasium if it's not being used and I can sign up for it. Oh, woo! The sad part is we're more excited about the facility usage than we are about the fact that we've taken an oath. Can I just steal something from Brother Kirby? We've got the magnifying glass on the wrong thing. Amen. This is still just a building. I love this building. I love this auditorium. The sound in it's awesome to preach in. It's great. But it's a building. You all are the church. I can meet with you all in a tent. I can meet with you all in the park. It'd be cold, but I'd meet with you anywhere we want. This is what the church is. For the last five years, God's allowed the Fredericks family and the White family to fight for you. I wouldn't trade it for the world. But don't let us fight for you and your family more than you should. Why don't we all start fighting? 
not each other. Let's fight that old slew foot. Let's fight old Satan. And let's say, no, sir, not on this property. Not in this home. Not in my daughter's room. Not in our basement. Not on our vehicles. Not in our classrooms. Not on my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. No, sir, not today. Let us be faithful and good soldiers of Jesus Christ so we can be more than conquerors. Why? Because we're dedicated. Why? Because we're determined. Why? Because we're driven. May we be the good soldiers of Jesus Christ that he would want us to be. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Father, thank you so much for this truth. It's my desire and prayer, God, that Freedom Baptist Church would be a body of believers who hand joining hand would fight with the pastor Fight with the pastor to keep wickedness out. Fight with the pastor to keep sin out. Yes, but may we fight with one another, fight, fight with hand in hand with others to say, we're gonna live for God. We're gonna remember this oath. I'm driven by the fact that God, I wanna please you. Oh, but I'm dedicated by this oath that says I want to live for God. May we be the right soldiers. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Let's stand to our feet. The altar's open. Do you need to get in a fight today? Hey, let me tell you, you don't gotta go looking much. Miss, Miss Carla, you can go ahead and play. You don't have to look very far. There's a fight out there. He wants your kids, he wants your grandkids, he wants your, your spouse, he wants you. It's time for us to fight. Paul said, I was spent and very gladly be spent for you. And I know Preacher White would very gladly fight and fight, fight, fight for you. But why don't you do some fighting for yourself as well? The same God that's in him that could help overcome the wicked one is the same God that's in you. Let's fight tonight. Let him help you fight the good fight. <laughs> open arms to help you fight. You know, church, we need to fight this good fight of faith. We need to do our part. It was said of that violinist Fritz Kreisler after a concert in the late 1800s, a woman rushed up to this famous violinist and said, I'd give my life to play like you. And his response was, ma'am, I did. And that's why. May we have Christians who say, man, I wish our family could be godly like that. I wish we could sit together. I wish we could sing godly. I wish we could, well then do it. You know how to make your dreams come true? Wake up and start working for them. <laughs> we must be driven. Sing that next verse. Altar's still open. If there's anyone here, let me say this. Maybe you don't know for certain you're on your way to heaven. Why don't you get that straightened out today? Stop trying to fight your way to heaven and let God do it for you. Heads bowed, eyes closed. <laughs>
That's right. He saved us all. God specializes in (laughs) saving souls from sin. Someone like you. He said, Behold, Hmm. I stand at the door and knock. I will come in if you will ask me to. And even now, he's waiting with open arms. God, I sure am glad we have church. But I don't want to just go through the motions. I want to know what I can do to help my church. I want to know what I can do to fulfill that oath of a church covenant. I want to know what I can do to please you. That should be our ultimate desire. And God, I know to please you, you would ask us to fight the good fight of faith. May we not just only resist the wicked one, but may we strengthen that spirit that lies within us daily by walking and spending time with you. I ask all these things in the strong name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Well, thank you so much for being here tonight. Uh, We'll let out on the prayer line in the morning as to how to pray for your preacher. And we've got several folks. I mentioned this morning, Miss Betty Cox. Pray for her. She's recovering with her wrist. She fell and broke several bones in her wrist or a bone. So pray for Miss Betty. And then uh, uh, the Hooker family, uh, Miss Carla's brother passed away. And so they went down to South Carolina for that. And then, of course, I mentioned Miss Kay Kaiser's daddy having surgery. So a lot of needs. Uh, Even if you're not part of the pastor's prayer team, I would like to encourage many of you church members who may not, to call the church in the morning. You don't necessarily have to catch the secretary there. If when you hear the answer machine, just hit 3-3. We use that for Jeremiah 33-3. Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things. I know it's not. And you'll hear your pastor. Good morning, church. Want to share with you a verse for the day and then want to give you some requests to pray for. I'd like to encourage many of you to maybe consider joining the pastor's prayer team. But if you don't do that, would you at least think about calling that prayer line every day and finding out the needs of our church so we can fight for our fellow church members. Thank you for being here. Uh, Again, uh, uh, as I dismiss in a second, if you still need to get a ticket or two, you can see Connie in the office. She'll mark your name down. Now be sure to bring those tickets as well. We have some drawings and things, and there should be a number on the back of your ticket, and that's how we'll give them out. So no ticket. Hello, no Pastor White here. I want to thank you for tuning in to our live stream today. Uh, whether you watched it live or on YouTube uh, or maybe an archive sermon, thank you so much for taking the time to do so. And I wanted to conclude the message today by telling you a few things uh, about how God feels about you and us in general. First of all, I want you to know today, if you're listening, God loves you. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that means you, friend. And so I want you to know today God loves you. The second thing I want you to know is that all of us are sinners. We've all missed the mark. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've all missed the mark, every one of us. The Bible also says in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And then in Romans 10, 13, the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I want to encourage you today, friend. There is hope for you. There's hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you'd like to talk to someone about trusting Christ as your Savior, you can do so. You can reach us at the church here at area code 336-969-6937. Or you can reach us on our website at freedombaptistrh.com where we'll have more information about salvation. And we'd love for you to let us know of your decision for Jesus Christ today. If you need prayer, if you need encouragement, please don't hesitate to call or email or visit our website. And we trust that you'll find the help needed in the Lord Jesus Christ. May you have a wonderful day. 
And may God bless you. Thank you again for listening to our broadcast.